No. Okay. Well, I have the version when we walk up the hill and go like up and down in the heat. I have the version where it's a little flatter and we kind of go that direction and there's a murder mystery. Ooh. So this is pick your adventure day. <laughs> That's pretty. I'm all over a murder mystery myself. Murder mystery. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So we'll get we started. We can do the uphill one in the fall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and before I get started, I have another pop-up one, Knoxville General Hospital. Ooh. Oh, cool. So, and that one is like, things may change around there pretty quickly coming up. So that one might be a good one for July or September, like early. And we can go earlier if this is too hot. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. We'll okay. pick a date at the end of this. What? Do we want to pick a date? Yeah, we'll pick a date at the end. Okay, so this is my first picture. And this is an aerial view of, we're in Talahi. Everybody just calls this Sequoia Hills. Right. But real estate agents are kind of familiar when you fold over here, it'll be a different neighborhood name depending on where you sell in Sequoia Hills. Technically by tax records. Yeah, yeah, and that's because Sequoia Hills today is actually, it's a collection of different subdivisions that added on to each other. Mm. A lot of, yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know what the number is, but 20 sounds realistic. I, mean, I don't know. How many, yeah, I don't really. And when you say subdivisions, they, they were built at different times? By different developers around the same time, but totally different histories. And now it's just like, it's all Sequoia Hill. So, so when was when was this put was this put in first or did it just evolve the boulevard? The boulevard is the first part. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if we were gonna walk that way, we would notice see all this infrastructure, the 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 obelisks and the park and the fountain and then there's a fancy word for that with the benches. Um, this is all part of Pilahi which is its own development inside Sequoia Hills, but the first part of Sequoia Hills was this early part of, like when you're first driving in on Cherokee Boulevard. And that was what, 1920? Late 1920s. Okay. Yeah, and that is significant for a lot of reasons, but there was a great thing that happened okay. in the late 20s. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, the Great Depression. The Great Depression, mm. right? Okay, so that's an important part of the history of Sequoia Hills specifically an important part of Talahi because Talahi is not only do we have a murder mystery we have a suicide to talk about uh -huh. mm. and we'll get walking but to answer your question Cherokee Boulevard was that came through first um, this is the trolley way. there's no trolley in here mm. never was. there's no trolley the only <clears throat> place there was a trolley that I know about on the center median is Island Home mm. so this became if you think about how neighborhoods evolved we've looked at fort sanders and old north knoxville and fourth and gill and we noticed that they had sidewalks on the sides and it's on a grid right and then there'll be a main street like broadway and and then there'll be secondary streets and sometimes the trolleys go down the main streets or the secondary streets and then you walk off side streets um Think about yeah. Park Ridge and Washington Avenue. That's a big street, and that's where the trolley was in Park Ridge. And then if you're driving down Jefferson, especially if you're running later in a hurry, it's harder to get down because that wasn't really built out. And so cars haven't followed the width of that. It didn't, it, it's still a one lane on Jefferson. Um, oh, it's a two lane, sorry. <laughs> so what happens in Sequoia Hills is the streetcar is coming down Kingston Pike and it jumps up onto Lion View Pike. Mm. Do you know where uh, Lakeshore Park is? There's a little building there, right? This mm -hmm. side of Lakeshore Park. And um, if you look closely, you can see that the trolley, the streetcar turned around in it. It's got that tear, teardrop shape. And there's a similar one in the parking lot um, in Fountain City, just on the other side of Gresham Road. That parking lot, you can kind of make out the teardrop where the trolley turned around. So, so this the is Kingston a, Pike trolley didn't go any farther than Lakeshore? Lines Bend. Lines yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this was a car really built, a neighborhood really built for cars. You know, and you can kind of tell. Very modern. It was very modern. 
So the center median was initially built for neighborhoods like this for streetcars to utilize, like they did in Island Home. But by the time a lot of these neighborhoods in this style got built, it was really more about cars, and this just becomes the pedestrian pathway. And if you look at um, if you're looking at craftsman style homes, which are ubiquitous during this time, you can kind of tell the older ones from the new ones because some of them have transoms above the door. Because think about the um, if you've ever shown or been in a Victorian style house, it's a lot of rooms that are closed off with transoms. The way they were heating was closing rooms and opening transoms for cooling. And by the time you get into this you're getting into forced air systems. So you can have open floor plans, right? And Craftsman's are kind of the first open floor plans, right? So the aerial view that's floating around, you can see this is out in the woods, right? Let's look at it. I mean, look at all the trees and you can also see the river. Yeah. The portion closest to Kingston Pike that was in the 20s, built in the 20s also? Yeah, both Palahi, <laughs> Palahi this and Palahi got in and there were several other smaller little developments that got built right at the right before the Great Depression. Um, Talahi is kind of the most remarkable because it's got all this infrastructure. So let's walk this way and look at. And was it always upscale? It was always Sequoia Hills was always upscale because remember you got to have a car to get here and. I want you guys to think about other another neighborhood, Holston Hill. Um, we'll go in the pedestrian. Oh, okay. Um, think about Holston Hill. Remember that the streetcar there really turned around um, well before Holston Hills. Like it, it, it was up where uh, Speedway Circle is. Mm. And that's five points. Uh, no, Burlington. I don't know why I called that five points. It turned around at Burlington. So, if you live in the Holston Hills, which is a contemporary neighborhood, that's really out in the country. I mean, this is out in the country, but Holston Hills Holston is like... Holston still spills. Mm -hmm. you, can't even, you can't even walk from the streetcar to Holston Hills. Right, you know what I mean? Right. You've got to have a car. And I don't know that too many horses were making it out to Holston Hills. But it has a few little things in it, like, kind of like this. Just a few. You Just know. a... Yeah. And it has... A Sequoia Hills-esque feel in parts of it. It's contemporary, yeah. But that one was really, Holston Hills was really based on that um, country club. And if you, when you come to the Holston Hills one, we'll talk about how the first people, the investors in the country club, one of which was one of the Wallace ancestors. Mm -hmm. When you, I won't explain this exactly right, but when you got invested in the country club, you got a lot, they did a lottery. And so the country club, building was tied to the oh, okay. that immediate neighborhood but the older part of Sequoia Hills is on the hill right above the country club I mean Holston Hills okay yeah, yeah. the Kalahi goes from that stone marker that's kind of down that way to that stone marker that's kind of up that way up on the hill and then from the river back high. to where we're gonna go and really that's as far as it went it wasn't huge okay right and also notice the concrete streets mm -hmm. that's another I mean this is pricey and, and Sequoia Hills up front was a different developer. His name was E.B. Farrell. And it was fancy, but it wasn't this fancy, right? Um, here's a picture of the sales office. The real estate agents are like this. And I want you to look, you can blow it up, but look over here, there's a big mural of the neighborhood. And this is them, so this is the Sequoia Hills sales office on Gay Street. Hmm. Yeah, and everybody, it's like a, I mean, as real estate agents, we have big events, but this looks like... There's a phone bar? This has like a... Damn. There's a tuba in there oh. involved. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> we just went that to Jim and George yeah, um, We don't have a tuba yeah, in this right. thing. Well, you know? Come on, Rusty. You're going to start bringing tubas to the party. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I think this was me. pretty fancy. I mean, this is like tuba level open, you know, sales <laughs> office. <laughs> We've got a whole entire like, orchestra band. or a band. Yeah. So let's 
same as that strip. Um, it kind of has a, you know, it comes in from that side and then it goes up here and then it goes out to where you can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and this, one of the amenities was really the park and the park was supposed to have waiting pools and this was for kids. They called it Happy Park, which may not be politically correct. To say, I don't know. Oh. But that's what they called it. <laughs> now I think they yeah. use this as a dog park. Yeah, now it's the dog park. <laughs> she said it was supposed to have had a pool and everything. A little waiting pool. Did it ever have one? I don't. I mean, if it did, it's gone now. Yeah. But I don't think it did. I used to. Um, it's a great dog park. I used to bring my little whippet here and he would just go. Take off. You did not live in Sequoia Hill. I, I lived in an apartment up on Knowlton, so that's why I was here. But yeah, in an apartment. So this is the park. Isn't this a great amenity? Can you imagine, like, finding something like this in a neighborhood now? Yeah. So here's another picture, and I want you guys to see how this is the roads before the houses. And I think this oh, yeah. is actually there's a couple of these online, but I think this is actually that hill we would have we could walk up. But it's it's like these are the lots, right? Huh? It's out in the country. Hmm. Was this farmland before it was developed, or was did it go straight from woods to development? Hmm. It was part of a series of of big, it was really land grants. I don't know that anybody was farming it so much. I mean, a lot of this was just kind of wilderness for a very long time. Um, when we get, when you go to the part down here where you, where the landing is, the first part, not the very back part, but the middle part here. Um, and I'm happy to walk down there. If you look across, there's some new construction. And here's my commercial break. That's actually my builder, High Oaks Construction, <laughs> uh, renovating that house. But if you look to the left of that house, um, you'll see an island, and that's called Looney's Island. And there was um, some, I don't know that there was development on it, but there was some habitation on it. Like people, I, I don't know if it was a, I don't think it was a bridge. I think it was, a, they were ferrying over there. I'd have to look. But it uh, eventually became a wildlife habitat, a recognized hmm. wildlife habitat. So, and these pic <coughs> these pictures are before the TVA impoundment, right? Um, TVA impoundment. This is twenty eight. So yeah, I mean, so this was the natural river. This is the natural river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good point. So you were asking about the entrance to Sequoia Hills. So this is not Talahi, but here's a little entrance house and there's half a gate. And look at the billboard here. Like, I love the old, like, you'll like it. And if you blow it up, it's not color, but it's just a great, like, it's just a really awesome entrance. And I don't know whatever happened to that little gatehouse, but hmm. I don't think it's there anymore. There's a house there now. It's obviously somebody's <coughs> yard. What Was it intended to be a gated community where you could only get in? <coughs> I've never read that. I think this was probably where they were putting real estate agents, like the mm. on-site sales office. Um, so, and there was supposed to be all of this, you know, Sequoia Somebody's Hills used and Tawahi is all, yeah, he's like, don't, um, you know, Native American motif. And so there was supposed to be a, like a $10,000 statue, which $10,000 is a lot of money now, but think about in mm -hmm. the late 1920s, it never happened, okay. right up on Sequoia. So the developer of Sequoia was a man named E.V. Farrell, and he was from Winston-Salem, and he <laughs> moved here to do the development. Okay. The Talahi development was a man named Robert Faust, and he got in partnership with Alex McMillan Company, which we talk about all the time in local lore because that's a long lasting, big real estate firm during that time. And um, that is the developer of Talahi. And if you remember from a lot of walking tours downtown over by the library, we visit the general building. And Robert Faust is this is a story that happened a lot, and it's a tragedy that happened a lot. He, uh, in that general building, is 
where he committed suicide in the yes. early 30s, mm. presumably as a result of this failure. Okay. Um, so the only house that was built in Tulahi, if you're going up the hill and you see the first set of pillars right up here, mm -hmm. there's a house to the right and it just got renovated and it was the UT president's house. Mm. Yep. That's the only house that got built in Tulahi. Really? Well, until right. it went to auction well after the Great Depression and sold for a lot less. These lots were like incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and I can give you statistics. I emailed myself. Mm -hmm. The president's house you were talking about, that has waterfront property mm -hmm. or not? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's water. Yeah, yeah it hits the water <laughs> on that side. Yeah. If it, yeah. And a lot of these acre, a lot of these houses, I'm not sure it actually does. I think it, the river curves. Well, on it the does. way out, you, it does. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure the backyard goes. Yeah. Because you can see it from Cherokee Farm. Mm. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Is that the one that they've added on both sides? Yes. Yeah. They just did a big renovation. They did a good job. And UT it sold it, right? UT, it's not that, yeah. Right. It's not they, that. And the reason they, part of the reason they sold it is they, they had to have a lot of foundation work. Mm. It was it was somewhere close to needing to be condemned. Then they sold it because of Peterson, basically, right? I mean, yeah, I, I, obviously yeah. they didn't want to invest the money, but... Yeah. John Peterson, the president. Yeah. yeah. I think they sold it for half, half of the asking. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly. I mean, so, I like we'll keep walking. Oh, don't fall. Don't fall. We don't want that on. We don't want that on. We don't want that on video.